What just happened in less than 24 hours will change our world forever. You'll be able to tell your kids about how the US dollar was once the strongest currency in the world and you were there to watch it fall into ruin. You'll be able to explain to your kids that it was all self-inflicted, how arrogance, greed, and bullying led to the collapse. Five BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, recently met in South Africa. One of the key objectives is to create their own currency, thus bypassing the U.S. dollar. Could this be the beginning of the fall of a great nation so blessed by God, but has chosen to abandon him? Is the United States dollar under threat? Well, the U.S. dollar became the backbone of the global economy after World War II because of America's robust economy, its democracy, and its transparent regulatory systems, which made the nation seem like a safe place for international investors. But now the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa have announced plans to develop a new currency. Their goal is to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar and other Western currencies as well and protect themselves from international pressure. In fact, Brazil and China have already struck a deal to bypass the dollar when paying for trade goods, which is a major milestone in Beijing's long-term plans to establish its own currency, the, the yuan, as the dominant international currency. It is unprecedented that the call to abandon the U.S. dollar as the global currency is gaining traction among many countries apart from the BRICS nations. Many African countries that the United States has unfairly targeted through sanctions also call for abandoning the U.S. dollar. On the basis that you are using their currency, in order to avoid the consequences of sanctions that arise from that, let's walk away from the dollar. And hence the... There's a global discussion taking place to say we must find alternative means of trading among ourselves and not subject ourselves to the situation where there's one, there's one currency in the world which becomes a global reserve currency because it gives the country that is the issuer of the money, that's the United States, it gives it the power to impose its will. For the people who work numbers, I am giving you free advice that those of you who are holding dollars, you surely might go into losses. You better, you better uh, do what you must do because uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. And uh, secondly, uh, we, through the central bank, we are having conversations to reinstate the interbank exchange uh, market that has since uh, not worked. Uh, and so I, I just want to assure uh, those uh, in Kenya who uh, were facing uh, challenges of access to dollars that we have taken uh, steps to ensure that uh, dollar availability in the next couple of weeks is going to be very different because our fuel companies and uh, will now be paying for fuel in Kenya shillings they do not have to look for dollars every month. The repercussions of countries abandoning the U.S. dollar as the global currency will be disastrous for the American economy as well as the global economy. The dollar is facing a revolt. The world knows it as the king of currencies, but the dominance of the dollar is now under threat. More and more countries are looking for alternatives, and China's yuan is emerging as a clear challenger. Beijing is pursuing a string of deals. The latest one is with Brazil. Brazil and China are ditching the dollar. From now on, they'll use their own currencies for trade. So China is pushing the yuan. What about the Indian rupee? It's not far behind. The Indian rupee is also emerging as a serious contender. And why are these trends significant? Because currencies drive commerce. The dollar's dominance gives the U.S. an outsized influence on the global economy and a shift away from the dollar will only hurt America. It will also hasten the rebalancing of the global economy. Apart from the adverse impact on the world economy, this could lead to geopolitical unrest. History has shown that political leaders who attempted to break away from trading in the U.S. dollar paid severely. The Iraq war was perceived by many as a move to have total control of the oil resources in the region and secure Washington's dominant role in formulating global energy policies. 
In October 2000, Saddam Hussein moved to switch Iraq's oil trade from the dollar to the euro. But the U.S. invasion of 2003 set the country's oil industry safely back into dollar denomination. Muammar Gaddafi suffered a similar fate after he attempted to move away from the dollar and introduced the gold dinar, a single African currency made with gold which would have replaced the U.S. dollar. According to some, the invasion of Libya was about protecting civilians. Others said it was about Libya's vast oil reserves. But everyone was convinced that it was all about currency. Specifically, Gaddafi's plan to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold that would eventually replace the U.S. dollar when trading with Africa. For those who don't understand end-time prophecy and have not detached themselves from worldly pleasures, what's unfolding in our world could cause them untold stress and fear. But Jesus encourages us in John 16, verse 33, to be at peace because he has overcome the world. When countries that were previously American allies seek a new partnership with China, one cannot help but wonder how the U.S. reached a point where countries are not only rejecting the U.S. currency, but also seeking alliance with other superpowers, such as China and Russia. You'll also be able to tell your kids that you were there when they took away paper dollars and coins in favor of a U.S. digital currency. And you'll be correct, because in fewer than 24 hours, the United States dollar changes forever. First week of April, the Federal Reserve begins the rollout of their new central bank digital U.S. dollar. That's right. It's called the FedNow program, and it's going to replace your paper currency, not overnight, but it's moving in that direction. And it will move the United States to a cashless society, a surveillance state where every transaction will be tracked and cataloged, where, as the Fed describes it, money that's in your account can even expire and become unusable. That's right, just like that Red Lobster gift card that you never used. One day you go and try to buy some popcorn shrimp and some Cheddar Bay biscuits and the gift card doesn't even work anymore gone. You can read how the Fed plans to use the expiring money right on the Fed's website. China's already doing it. We already have a template for it. And many U.S. government museums, national parks, historical sites are no longer accepting paper dollars. Ultimately, the digital currency the Federal Reserve is pushing for will lead to a cashless society, where it will be extremely difficult to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. Folks, the stage is gradually being set for the rise of the Antichrist. Some might think that going cashless is a convenient way to transact. While that may be true, what happens when you disagree with the government and woke businesses on godless ideologies they shove down your throats? Economic boycott. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelation 13, verse 17. Your bank accounts, credit card, and digital currency will be frozen. You cannot buy or sell and not even meet your basic needs, such as buying food for yourself and your family. We're entering perilous times, but those who endure will be saved. And many American businesses have already gone cashless as well. They'll pretend it's all about convenience, but really, you know, it's all about control. The brilliant Catherine Austin Fitz recently described what going cashless would do to all of us. The reality as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive, it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us. And CBDCs, central bank digital currencies and vaccine passports or digital IDs are sort of the last uh, shutting of the gate. It's hard for many people to imagine the risks here because we're so used to living with financial transaction freedom. And we don't understand that when this gate closes on us, we literally will be sitting in a system where the central banks believe that our assets belong to them and they can dictate where we can spend money and what we can spend money on. It's frightening and she's 100% correct. What many people are unaware of is, whether planned in advance or not, the pandemic was used to usher in a cashless society. Unfortunately, we are at the point of no return. This morning, cash in the age of COVID-19. The pandemic appears to be accelerating the rise of digital currency. Here in the U.S., mobile payments have spiked dramatically since the outbreak. In the U.K., the BBC reports ATM withdrawals are down 60 
percent. China's central bank has reportedly been disinfecting banknotes, while many businesses around the world are asking customers not to use cash at all. It's all making some wonder if the digital dollar is the new king of currency. You know, we're living at a moment in time where the world is a very uncertain and anxious place. While people's realities are being shaped through edutainment, Hollywood always foretells a future where the majority of the planet has turned into a global surveillance state. And as previously shown, what was once seen as being just a form of entertainment has now become an everyday reality. Zubinir Brzezinski also documented that there will be a closer and tighter surveillance on civilians. And this will be as a result of the digital technology of the multinational corporations. This is a global trend among some of the leading corporations. And Visa, the global credit card company, is also another company that is also pushing for a cash assistant to be set up. Visa sits at the center of a global network of more than 1,500 banks linked by 1.5 million miles of secure fiber optic lines. And it does seem more convenient when you can just click one button and make a transaction in just seconds without going into your wallet and taking out coins and paper. But cashless is going into a direction where there is no reverse in the trends. And when one of the big four American multinational technology companies pursues a business partnership with one of the largest investment banking enterprises in the world, the US-based Goldman Sachs. Everything the geopolitician Zbigniew Brzezinski said half a century ago is now coming to pass before our eyes. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. Creating a digital currency makes it easy to control you when government and business entities have access to everything about you. If you refuse to follow their directive, you will be cut off from engaging in financial transactions. Consider a world in which you can't buy anything with cash in grocery stores, drug stores, or gas stations because of a cashless system, and your access to the digital world is restricted because you haven't received the mark of the beast. Imagine being unable to communicate with your loved ones by phone, text messages, or social media because you refuse to bow to the one world spiritual leader. If you think these are mere conspiracies, think again because that is where we are headed, and we may get there sooner than you think. The Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis I, is the most powerful geopolitician on this earth. He sits on a throne between two angels, a model of God's throne, clearly showing whose place he wants to take on this earth. The true church has always understood the Pope as a usurper of the headship of Christ over his church. It was Martin Luther who said that the reign of Antichrist is the papacy, and all the people did say, Amen. A holy terror seized their souls. It was Antichrist whom they beheld seated on the pontifical throne. Luther made that clear. He meets with the founders and current heads of the Technotronic Digital Age, whose companies collect all of our data and is preparing for a global cashless society. The chairman and CEO of the largest multinational mass media and entertainment conglomerate, Disney's Bob Iger, also visits the Vatican to get a photo op with the Pope. And others all over the business world flood to the Vatican, taking economic advice from the Bishop of Rome, the Vatican has also attracted some of the most famous individuals on this earth to discuss climate change and the effects of geoengineering. This Jesuit Pope outwardly advises the energy companies on caring for the environment, but is covertly investing into these very same monopolies. Your average person would find it absurd if you were to tell them that this system wants to take over the world. She has openly declared it in her own words, it's not a secret. Only a few scattered people who still diligently study the prophetic charter are aware of this. So how will all roads lead to Rome? You carefully conditioned minds into the fantasy of the Middle Ages when papal Rome once ruled most of Europe, so you can familiarize the world's minds into the past by using the most popular shows. You then cleverly and carefully implant Roman Catholic imagery into the public. This will slowly break down people's resistance when they see heroes like Robin Hood, played by Russell Crowe, and John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, and by musicians like Beyonce. This will put people's guards down to the papacy. Then you can create the atmosphere of the Inquisition of the Dark Ages by encouraging people to spy on their neighbors. And the whole world will be reliving once again the time period of the Dark Ages. While they become distracted, the Vatican, who has the most ancient and the most experienced State Department in existence, will continue what she has been doing for over one and a half millennia 
covering the width of five continents, dealing with the different nations and kingdoms and expanding her influence. While most of us will be distracted and the world is carrying down a road of no return, the papacy's true colors will start to come out when you start to see her supporting the US energy wars. All roads will eventually lead to Rome, whether you believe it or not, whether you agree or disagree, but it will not last forever. This is Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa. On Sunday, he visited the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and made a stunning revelation. Ramaphosa said that Riyadh wants to join BRICS. Here's what he said during the visit. The Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman did express Saudi Arabia's desire to be part of BRICS. A couple of others are keen on joining as well. They have a great desire and uh, they are not the only country that is finding the BRICS family or uh, formation attractive because of what BRICS stands for. And so we did say to them, the BRICS uh, nations are going to be meeting in a summit next year under the chairship of South Africa. Uh, in South Africa and the matter is going to be under consideration and already a number of countries or nations have been making approaches to each of the BRICS members and we've given them the same answer that it will be discussed by the BRICS uh, partners themselves, five of them, and thereafter a decision will be made. Anyone who believes that the demise of the U.S. currency and the consequent rise of China and Russia is a positive development should reconsider. You must understand that the global elites who control the world thrive on chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it, and we've got to unite the rest of the free world. The threat of death is the highest way to exercise control over someone, and with a current core of world leaders and government leaders wanting to take control of everyone, they have chosen the most powerful thing they can choose, and that's fear. So the government has overstepped its bounds, way overstepped its bounds. God never, ever ordained government to do what government is doing today. It's way beyond God's intention. Government had a simple purpose, punish evildoers and protect those who do good. And to show you how perverted the government is, it is basically committed to protecting the people who do evil and punishing the people who do good. It's been reversed. They have to create chaos to achieve their ultimate goal of a new economic order where global elites control and rule the world. Through that chaos would arise the Antichrist, whom the whole world would wonder after to save them from untold pain and hardship. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, verses 6 to 7. Christians must pray for God's divine intervention because this developing storm could lead to World War III. The idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War III. The coming tribulation will cause many people, even some believers in Jesus Christ, to be discouraged. That is all the more reason to deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ right now. Grow in Him by studying and meditating on His Word. Connect with Him daily through prayer, and He will empower you to endure all suffering. Let us pray for our nation. Lord, America needs you. We are at a crossroads and don't know what to do but our eyes are on you. For the sake of the remnant who still acknowledge you as the sovereign Lord and the Savior of the world, please show mercy on our country. Protect your people from the powers of darkness. We ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen.